last week, we want to look at another group, another group out of the book of 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. If you don't mind uh, standing for the reading of God's word, 2 Kings chapter 7. And uh, I want you to uh, look at these, look at these four guys, look at these four guys and see how our lives uh, can reflect them in many ways. 2 Kings chapter 7. For those of you who still uh, have that book in your hand, Amen. There's still power in that book. I'm old school. I'm still old school. But uh, it, for those of you flipping to 2 Kings, take your time. Take your time. And uh, it'll be there in a minute. Bring your Bibles. Bring your notepads. Let's study together. 2 Kings chapter 7. Look at verse number 3. Now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. Look what they questioned. Look what they said to themselves. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here. But with the famine in the city, we'll starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Armenian army. If they let us live, cool. But if they kill us, we were going to get that anyway. Go back, go back. I ain't through with that verse. He's saying, they're saying, these four leopards, these four guys with leprosy are saying, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go back, we're going to die. If we move forward, we might die. Okay. This group and this group kind of got it. Let me try this group. I know what I'm going to get here. I know what I got back there, but if I move up there, I'm not sure. I'm going to die here. I was going to die back there, but I might die. Look at verse number five. So at twilight, they set out for the camp of the Armenians. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused, that's your shouting right there. For the Lord had called the Armenian army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and galloping horses and the sounds of a great army approaching. The king of Israel has hired, look what they said to themselves. The king of Israel has hired uh, the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us, they cried to one another. So they panicked and ran into the night, abandoning their tents, horses, donkeys, everything else, and they fled for their lives. Verse number 8, when the lepers arrived at the edge of the camp, they went in one tent after another. Eden, now this is, this is, this is good Bible, drink it, but y'all know how we would say it, eating and drinking. D-R-A-N-K-I-N-G. That's when you really got it going. You ain't drinking, that's when you're sipping, when you drank it. And they carried off silver and gold and clothing, and then they hid it. This is where I have a problem with the text. Finally, they said to each other, this ain't right. This is a good day of good news, and we ain't sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us. Come on. Let us go back and tell the people at the palace. So they went back to the city and told the gatekeepers what had happened. We went out to the Armenian camp, they said, and no one was there. The horses and the donkeys were tethered, and that means tied up, and the tents were all in order. But there wasn't a single person around. Here's the last verse. Then the gatekeeper shouted the good news to the people in the palace. Y'all see that? If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go back there, we're going to die. If we go up there, we might die. This morning, I want to speak on the subject, bust a move. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, sometime it's time to bust a move. If that neighbor wouldn't speak to you, I would say, why are you finding a new neighbor? Look at your next neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's time to bust a move. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice. And be glad in it. 
Father God, please help us to look at our condition right now, good, bad, or indifferent. Help us to make decisions that will help us to progress to the promises that you would have for us when we are sitting in an environment that's not pleasurable to us. Dear God, help us to move. Help us to hear your word, but be doers. Move with your word and help it to transform us by transforming the renewing of our mind. Thank you for this moment. In your Sunday, we do pray. And all who believe said amen. There is a book written by Spencer Johnson entitled, Who Moved My Cheese? There are four characters in this book, Sniff and Scary and Him and Hawk. Sniff and Scary are two rats who, in the depiction of Spencer Brown, Spencer, Spencer, Brown, Spencer Johnson's book, show that there is a block of cheese that these rats keep going towards. Sniff and Scary are different than him and Ha. Him and Ha move their house next to the cheese so they can open up the door and just simply go and get the cheese. Sniff and Scary left their homes where they were and knew that the cheese was a temporary fix for a permanent problem. One day, to him and Ha's bewilderment, they step out of their house and there is no more cheese. Him and Ha spent the rest of their days hemming and hawing about what happened to the cheese by fussing at each other while Sniff and Scary goes out to look for more cheese. What was the day when you opened up your door and your cheese left? What was the day when you had to go to the funeral and you buried your cheese? What was the day that you found out with layoffs that the cheese you had stored up, now you're going to have to save? What was the day when your half cheese walked out the door? It's not that bad things happen to us. It's how we adjust to those bad things. There's a story in the Bible that tells when the children of Israel who had eaten manna, this bready substance, actually the word manna in the Hebrew means what is this? They had eaten it for 41 years now. We always stop at 40 years, but the one year, was because they were in the land of milk and honey still eating manna. And the Bible says in the book of Exodus 17 that God stopped the manna to force them to eat grapes that were on the vine. They had gotten adjusted to nothing when they were sitting around plenty. The problem was that they were unwilling to move towards the promises that God had for them in their lives. Here's the struggle with most of us. Most of us get so adjusted to nothing that we're scared of finding something. Most of us get so adjusted to mediocrity, we get adjusted to a casual nature in life, we get adjusted to struggling, we get adjusted to being broke, we're getting adjusted to having jacked up relationships. We get adjusted to nothing because you are scared of something you have never been in. So you keep your mess going so you can stay in an environment that you have become accustomed to. You know that's passed down from generation to generation. Grandmama was jacked up. Granddaddy was jacked up. Mama was jacked up. Daddy was jacked up. So I'm going to follow in the same pattern because it makes too much sense for me to work to change. Preach, doc. I'm doing it. They just hadn't woken up yet. So some of us would prefer staying at nothing than working towards something. And that's the story of these four brothers with leprosy. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go back there, we're going to die. If we bust a move, we might die. Here's the first thing I, 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 I see the text breathing out to us. You'll never be healthy individually, mentally, progressively, 
structurally, mentally, or physically if you don't ever question yourself. Everybody say question yourself. Now, we are talented at questioning everybody else, but we never question ourselves. What do you mean, preacher? Well, sometimes you have to ask yourself, why am I jacked up? Sometimes you got to question yourself, why am I in this predicament? Why am I stuck at nothing? Why at every month I end the month broke? And you ask yourself the question repeatedly so you can start answering the question when you're at your most vulnerable state. Okay, come here, come here, come here. Y'all wake up. So here it is, that if I'm always broke, I got to back up to find out why I'm always broke. And right when I want to impulse do something, I have to question myself, is this the right thing? If I'm going to go to Neiman Marcus or pay less, is this? If I'm going to eat at Paris Steakhouse or Charcoal Brawler off of Jefferson, is this? Am I going to mess this up just so I can look good when nobody cares? So some of us struggle in life because we have gotten adjusted to lack of moving forward. So we would prefer to stay here and die because it's too much work to move. Okay, come here, come. So here's the thing I like that they did first. They first of all questioned. Look what the Bible says in verse number three and four. They said, why are we going to sit here and die? Because if we died here, we know what we're about to get. Why don't we try something different and make a change that might change our direction? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, here it is. Uh, when I take my son to school every, every morning, uh, there is a road. I ain't going to tell you where it is. But there's a road we go down that has a lot of traffic. Because it's a one-lane road. So I noticed one day that people were going through this neighborhood. And I wanted to see, why are these people going through this neighborhood? I found out one day. Now, I've been taking them to the same school for the last three years, and I've gone the way I know. I decided to follow these people through this neighborhood. And the neighborhood led me right to the back of his school. I missed two school zones. I missed four lights, and it shaves off seven minutes. Now, here's the problem. The first time, he was very late. Okay, no, no, he was very, and he was late because it was my fault. It was some houses over there I wanted to see. I said, ah, they ain't teaching you nothing in the first period. You get that when you get there. But here's the problem. I got tied up going down the wrong side and ended up making him late. But then what I did, so I wouldn't forget where I was going, I decided to go back that way, back to the house. So I could remember it, and I could also track my time. Now I take that way every day because it trims off seven to 10 minutes, which allows me to sleep for seven or 10 minutes more. Come here, I'm trying to help y'all with something. But I had to take a chance of looking at a different way than going the same way I've gone. Now here's where we go wrong. Most of us, if we would have been late the first day, we wouldn't have tried it again and we would have went right back in the rut because it's easier to go through this rut than trying something. Your day don't have to be bad. You wake up and make it a bad day. Your relationship don't have to be jacked up. You making it jacked up. Your money don't have to be always shifted. You make it because you're unwilling to change. Y'all don't have to say, man, I'm going to say it for myself. Me and Mama Hilbert and Mama Metal, we got a church, just the three of y'all. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Forget the rest of y'all. It's us. So here's the problem. You choose what you want to do. You can stay here and die. You can go back here and die. Or you can try to bust a move and make a change. So how do you do that? First of all, question yourself. Secondly, in questioning yourself, you got to be careful who you allow your question to go through because sometimes it ain't just you. It's the circle you hang around. Come here, come here, because I like something here. All four of them said, let's bust the move. It's right there in the Bible. It says 
they said to themselves, if we stay here, if we go back, if we move forward, we might. Test it. All four of them agree that where we are is not where we want to end. All right. I wonder how would the story have been different if only one of them wanted to move forward while the other three say it's too much work. Because sometimes people with no dreams will help you abort yours. Some people with no hope like to snatch yours. When some people with no drive, they're more worried about what they're driving instead of what's driving them, will take your hope away. And in the process, some folks, let me take my glass off, some folks, you got to drop off at the crossroads. Because some of us are carrying people along with us that were meant to get off the bus three exits ago. But you keep holding on to them because at least you know them, even though them have not your best interest in mind. Okay, okay. Uh, uh. All four of them needed each other because I wonder if some of them leprosy can destroy your legs, it can destroy, and normally your sores will start at the bottom of your feet, and as it progress up, it destroys. So I wonder, were some of them at such a bad state that maybe one of them had to be carried? I wonder, was one of them so sick that he couldn't keep anything down, so he needed the other two, the other three, to help him along. Every now and then, go back and evaluate your circle. See if who I got around me is, first of all, promoting godliness. Secondly, promoting progression. And thirdly, promoting me to have a better life. I told the 8 o'clock service years ago, I was working at, working at Aetna U.S. Healthcare off of Inwood and, uh, Inwood and 35. Y'all know where that is? Inwood and 35? Y'all know where Inwood and 35 is? I'm trying to get y'all to talk some kind of way. Y'all know where Inwood and 35? It's a liquor store right there. Y'all know where that is? <laughs> now some folks, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to got you now. The centennial. Oh, okay, so... Inwood and 35 run across each other. There's an Aetna U.S. Healthcare. I used to work there. I started off working there, and I started off in the mail room. And uh, in the mail room is where they had an HR board. This was back in, oh, ain't none of your business. Back in the early 90s. And I went in there, and uh, I was working in the mail room, and I started noticing they were putting up job posters. And every time I would go look at the job posting, the other mailroom folk would suggest to me, I ain't going to give you no job. This is about the best it's going to get. You ought to be glad you're here. So I'm trying to apply for stuff. And I listened to them for a while until one day when they were out sick. Y'all know that sick I'm talking about? It's when you practice your sickness before you call in. <coughs> uh, I can't make it today. They were well, but y'all know that. Everybody, all of us have done that. Uh, uh, they were out sick, and I applied for a job. Got an interview, y'all. Got an interview up on the fifth floor. The fifth floor. <laughs> Brother man, on the fifth floor. Got up there, and in the interview process, the man asked me, why won't more people from down there apply? He said, because we want to hire from within. And we actually like people who start off in the system so they can know. But we have to keep going outside. And I told him, well, it took me a while, but I had basement mentality. Come here. Because I was thinking and listening to basement thoughts. And folks who don't want to get out the basement were trying to suggest to me there's no way out. Because I was listening to people who were not looking for a way out. I spent most of my time listening to him and Hall instead of listening, listening to Scary and Snip. Because let me tell you something. You can keep doing what you've always done, but you'll keep getting what you've always got. 
So sometimes you got to look at your circle, you got to look at your people, and, and get around folks who have done something. Get around folks who paid off their house in the 28th year instead of the 32nd year. Some of y'all ain't getting that. Look at people who have a car that you laughing at that's, that's paid off. And you say, boy, I wouldn't drive that mess. But then when you go to their bank account, well, you driving a new car and can't put the premium gas that is due it. You in there looking for everybody's 86 octane. And you know that the car can't take no racetrack, but you up in there pumping. Y'all can't say, get around some folks. I love to be around people who are thinking, who are motivated, who have a drive, who are alive who are not out of survival mode, who are talking about something instead of people who are always down and out, doom and gloom, no good day. Don't you get tired of folks who look at it always being clouded when God is trying to show you a brighter side? Aren't you sick of folks making it look bad when it don't have to be bad? It's because you have gotten used to your leprosy. And we ought to be people who know how to overcome. We ought to have people who know how to move forward. How, how to, our forefathers and our, uh, 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 our grandparents who lived through rough lives and still had dignity on Sunday morning. We ought to be people, but now we can't take nothing because we ain't made out of nothing. Preach, man. So first of all, you got to question yourself. Secondly, you got to see who's around you. And in the process of seeing who around you, there's an idea here that I think is amazing. Because they started moving in verse number five, they started moving to the Armenian camp. Let me, let me give it to you. Let, give, me, let, give me verse number six. Give me verse number six. Second Kings chapter seven. Everybody say verse number six. Thank you. You can speak. Uh, everybody say second Kings chapter seven, verse number six. Look what it says. For the Lord had caused the Armenian army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping of horses and the sounds of a great army approaching. The king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us, they cried to one another. Where's the army? Go back to verse number five. The Bible says in verse number five, so at twilight, they set out for the camp of the Armenians. Who is they? The four lepers. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. Okay. Go back to verse number six. They heard the sound of an army. And it sounded like speeding chariots, galloping horses, and the sound of a great army approaching. Who is the army? Go back to verse number five. So at twilight they set <laughs> for the camp of the Armenians. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. Verse number six. It sounds like an army. Verse number five is for sick folk. Verse number six, it sounds like horses. Verse number five, it's for sick folks. Verse number six, it sounds like that somebody had hired the Egyptians and the uh, uh, Hittites to come and battle. But in verse number five, it was just four. How did four sick folks sound like an army? I found out something. When you move, God moves. I wish I had somebody to help me here. And maybe the reason God ain't never moved on your behalf is because you waiting on God to move, God is waiting on you to move, and both of y'all are staring at each other. God said, I'll give you a door of escape, but you still got to use the door. I'll help you out, but you got to help yourself out. And when the enemy heard that they were coming, I don't think it's by happenstance that they heard the army at the same time they started moving. The 
that God worked out everything for his glory in the progression of your movement towards his glory. Y'all catch that? So what are you saying, preacher? That maybe God wants to help you over here, but you got to start moving toward here over there. Don't be praying to God for a job and you won't apply. Don't be applying for God that my money gets better and you don't tithe. Don't ask God to make your marriage better and you ain't prayed for him since the last time y'all had a fight. Don't ask for your kids to be better when you're too busy to spend time with them. Don't ask for things to change when you are unwilling to participate in the change. Why do we expect God? See, that's why most folks are running away from church and don't, because we have an unhealthy view of who God is. We just think God ought to come and pick us up, float us over like a spike leaf moving to a job, sit us down in the boss's office, and the boss says, you are hired. It don't work like that. Get up, go do something, and God will make a change on your way to your do something. I was telling an 8 o'clock service, I was telling, I was telling an 8 o'clock service, uh, I was telling an 8 o'clock service, bam, okay, uh, I was telling an 8 o'clock service that um, one time we were here late one night and a woman, uh, the door hadn't been locked in, she swung that door open, she came in frantic, uh, crying, screaming, just irate. Patrick, you remember uh, one night, uh, Patrick and I and Sister Medlin was up here and the band was on their way and uh, she came in screaming. Uh, she was in an abusive relationship and she said, I got to get out of this apartment. And she was waiting for me to get her out of the apartment. And I said, I'm going to help you. And I've, I've set up help for them because I can get you hired next door at the dollar store. But what I do is I go talk to the manager, tell him what I'm trying to do. But I ain't going to go over there with you. Come here. You're going to get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about 3 o'clock. I'm talking about when they open. They open at 8. Get in there and apply. And normally I discount for I, And it's my sin. I'm working on But I've been hurt so many times by giving folks money that didn't want to change. And I went over there and I said, got somebody coming, blah, 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 blah. And when she walked out the door, I looked at Patrick, I said, man, please. Sister Madeline called me yesterday and said, guess who's working at the dollar store? Now hold on, hold on, hold on. Because she did what she's supposed to do, I'm going to even go over there and help her with more. Because most of us want to get help, but you don't want to participate in your help. You want the Armenian army to bring the food to you because you like playing a guilty part. God ought to understand I got leprosy. No, God still gave you the ability to move. God still gave you strength. I know you broke, but you can work. And maybe sometimes you need to work two jobs. Sometimes, I mean, sleep is not at a premium anymore. I mean, clothes, I, you can go learn how to sleep at your job. Come on, everybody here done, done a fake prayer when your boss walk up. Amen. You know, come on, somebody. You got to do what you got to do until God opens some doors but God has never blessed a lazy person. Even the 12 uh, uh, disciples, they were all doing something. They were doing the wrong thing, but God used people who were actively involved with something. All I'm asking you to do is God has greater for you, but he wants you to move towards it so you appreciate it when you get. And so, okay, okay, so let me, let me go. He said, so first of all, you got to question, everybody say question yourself. Secondly, you got to look at your circles. Everybody say, look at your circle. Thirdly, God won't move until you move. And here's where, here's where your joy comes. Because when they get to the camp, because the Armenian army thought they heard the Hittites and the Egyptians, they ran out. 
Have you ever run out your house? Normally, if you run out, you leave whatever was going on, on. So they walked up, and the original language simply says, and everything was ready. <sighs> because if I got leprosy and I'm sick and I'm weak and I ain't eating in days, I don't really have the energy to put that bacon on the skin. You know, so you know what the text suggests? And I miss saying this at 8 o'clock. I wish I could bring them back, but they ain't coming back. Uh, that the Bible actually suggests when they got there, they didn't have to fix their food. It was already being prepared. Uh, the clothes were clean. Everything was ready. All they had to do, because you know, our God knows us. Our God knows what you need. He knows what's going on. And when you know that you are progressing towards God, God prepares over there where you're trying to figure it out over here. But it is where the text interests me. And this is where I have trouble with the text. Because when they get there, they eating. I mean, there's bacon sandwiches flying around. There's, they changing clothes every five minutes. I mean, they rolling. They rolling. They putting silver in their pocket. Taking off Rolexes. You know what they're doing. Y'all know. Come on. Putting them, hiding them. And then somebody. Now see, even when you get blessed, you still got to question yourself. Somebody in the group, out of the four, said, come on, y'all. We can't, we can't do this because we know some folks who are starving and there's plenty here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He's, they say to themselves that the folks who put us out because the reason they were on the outside the gate is because when they got sick, folks inside the city put them out. Now I'm going to turn around and help those. Come here. Come here. It's easy to help folks who've helped you. But it's a whole different situation to turn around and help that brother who divorced you on his dying day. It's very difficult to help the person who laid you off. It's difficult to help the one who left you for dead to turn. But let me tell you what true deliverance is. True deliverance is when you can help those who would not help you. Uh, so look what they do. Look what they do. It's actually the idea when you finally get delivered and get blessed, you turn around and bless somebody else. One time, one of our deacons was at a gas station, and they obviously misquoted the price on the gallon tank. It was supposed to be $2.13, but well, they left two off, and it was 13 cents per gallon. So one of our deacons went up there and saw it and filled up his tank. And then he called his wife, and she went up there and filled her tank. Well, and then he called his pastor. Now, I'm a man of God. So I went up there. <laughs> and I filled up my tank. Now I called back up to church. I said, get them church bus up here. The Lord will make a way. Come on, somebody. Somehow. You know, you get real spiritual. And then after we filled up all our cars and the whole staff went up there, I said, now, I went in the office. I got real holy. Now, listen, somebody going to lose their job. You know, it's bad when you get blessed and then you block. And I want to thank Deacon Sneed for calling me. <laughs> he ain't going to call me again, is he? I want to thank him for his grace and his mercy. Here's the problem. Some of us get blessed, and then after we done come out of hell and high water, had a nerve to be critical of somebody who's still stuck out there with leprosy. You know y'all were about to get a divorce and you're going to have a nerve to sit up and talk about somebody else getting a divorce. You know how 
jacked up you were when you were a teenager and had it not been for the grace of God to pull you out of that bar, to pull you out of that club, to pull you out of that. And you're going to sit around and talk about our youth? Had it not been for the grace of God that that flu then turned into pneumonia, and pneumonia, double pneumonia, and you were laying out. And, and then amazing, you ain't got some disease. It was because of the grace of God. And when God brings you out, how in the world are you going to sit there and tell somebody else, you better figure it out? No, the reason God blesses you is for you to bless somebody else. Here's the question. Who you blessing that don't have your last name? I ain't talking about your brother. It's easy to help your brother and your cousin and your mama and because you always got an excuse why they jacked up. It's never their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. But I'm talking about people who you bless that you ain't asking nothing back from. Because look at the text. The text says they still couldn't go in the city. It's right there in your Bible. It's right there in the Bible. The Bible is like the, the, the show Walking Dead. You have to keep reading it. You had to keep watching it so you can know who's still alive. The four leopards are sitting there, and they still can't go in the city. So what they do is they scream to the gatekeeper. Y'all want something to eat? The gatekeeper said, show sure enough. And they said, we know where the food is. Now catch, catch this, catch this, I got to go. Catch this. But you don't have folks with, you don't have problems with sick folks when sick folks got something you need. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got all type of rules when we got it together. But when you struggling, and when you out there, I don't care who it is, you will take what you need to survive. And this text is just suggesting to us that some of us can do better. But here's the principle I want you to get. You won't do better if you are unwilling to work to do better. Secondly, here's the principle. When you get blessed, God ain't going to keep blessing you when you don't become a blessing. And thirdly, don't get so comfortable in that blessing because God has a way of moving that blessing so that you can keep chasing after him and not after the blessing. Because nothing stays the same. Even people. People can think you the best thing since sliced bread until they arrive. And then what became a blessing is now a burden because they look down at you. He ought to be, she ought to be. But when you were in need. But if you view it like that, you'll never have a kingdom mentality. you have an earthly mentality that will destroy your life. So what I'm suggesting to you is, as we look at this month, as we look at this series, what are you moving toward? What are you working toward? And why are you moving towards a better you that's a more godly you Mute yourself from people who are trying to destroy where you're trying to go. There's some folks sitting there right here. Right here. That laugh, maybe not right here, but in the area. That laugh when we bought this jacked up grocery store. The first time we brought some church, it was some folks, they ain't here no more. But they came and looked at those boarded up wall with movie posters that went back 10 years ain't that right Deacon Smith I mean I mean they were that thick with paper and glue from putting up y'all remember when they used to put up posters there wasn't glass here and when we walked in there was no children's wing there was no auditorium that was actually where they were stealing cars and they would bring the cars through the back through the loading dock and strip them it was abandoned car, and people would say, really, this is where you about to take us? I would prefer staying at the hotel. But while people are talking negatively in you, you got to see what they can't see. So sometimes you have to let it in, but then you got to shut it up. You know how to do that. 
You, have you ever talked to somebody and ain't heard a word they said? Come on, it's something I can teach you on Wednesday night. I can hold a whole conversation with you and can't repeat back the and you said if you ain't talking about nothing. But sometimes what happens to us is that on the way to your destiny, you are bored by listening to folks who don't know how to dream, don't have a plan, ain't trying to get their act right together. What we want to do this month, start questioning yourself, start evaluating yourself. Look where, look where your drama lies. Look where your, your headache lies. Look where your stress lies. Look at what keeps you up at night. And question yourself, not anybody else, because you can spend all your day blaming somebody else and still not change. I can get you right, but if I don't get myself right, I'm still going to be up at night. Question yourself to see what I need to do so I can go toward my promise and not end where I start. Amen? Here's your takeaways this week. Here's your takeaways. Pull out your, pull out your uh, phones, your tablets. Look at this all week. Look at this all week. Put out something to write this down and pray over it this whole week. Number one, create some healthy questions for your life. Y'all, do y'all understand that? Create some healthy questions for your life. Because sometimes you keep doing what you've always done because you do it unconsciously. You don't mean any harm, but you keep doing it because that's what you've always done. So start questioning yourself. Start asking yourself some questions. Number two, consistently evaluate your circle. First of all, look at your circle and see how they are helping you. I call it a dream team. Get you some people together with different skill sets, different ideas, different motivation, different strides, and see how you're, and a lot of times you got to leave your family to do that. Let me help you now. Y'all might not like this, but a lot of times when you only invest in your family, you get only the ideas that grew up with the family. Y'all listen to me. That if I only listen to the days, guess what? The days got a set of mentality that are created by the days. It's when I listen to the days, but I also listen to the Johnsons, the Smiths, the, uh, the, the other people who have different viewpoints that I'm able to make an educated decision about my future. But if you don't want to change, keep listening to the folks who got jacked up. If everybody in your circle is broke, everybody in your circle is borrowing from each other, everybody in your circle is passing one lawnmower from one house to the next, then you got to ask yourself, if I keep listening to these same jacked up people, I'm going to end up. Woo! I'm preaching. Y'all just ain't getting it. Because sometimes your biggest blessing is divorcing yourself from the folks you grew up with. You love them, do what I do. Show up for an hour on Christmas. I ain't buying nobody no gifts. God bless you is my gift. I'm praying for you. I hope the best for you. <laughs> but sometimes you got to leave so you can grow. I'm really trying to give y'all that. You got to leave sometimes so you can grow. So consistently evaluate your circle. Number three, when you move to your blessing, the question is on the table, who do you bless? Because I'm just crazy enough to believe God ain't going to keep blessing you when your blessings are selfish. He's not going to keep helping you when you're just trying to help yourself. Put your hand in the cookie jar, but pass out some cookies. Y'all hear me? Who are... How are you making an impact as you move forward? How are you changing your community? How are you changing your family? How are you changing your life? And when you do that, guess what? God will meet you in your movement. We have a God who moves. We have a God who progresses. Who a God who doesn't stay still. He is spirit still developing us. We need to keep moving by his grace and his power. Amen. Let's pray right now. Our leadership team will come down and be here for you. If you just need prayer, if you need guidance, if you need peace, if you need a greater understanding because God is doing something great in your life, we would love for you to be here with us and uh, be encouraged by uh, his grace and his mercy. Let's pray right now.